It's Sunday, February 18th. I'm here at the West End Gun Club. It's just after six in the morning here. There's a couple guys on the main line. Um, I think I hear some shooting in one of the bays here, but I'm here at the rimfire range. Wanted to come out and shoot some 22. So I'm gonna get set up here. Um, the sun is starting to come out, so I should be able to get some early morning rounds in. Um, start off my Sunday. Today it was supposed to be windy according to the uh, weather reports, so I, I guess later on in the morning. So I, that's why I came out here at the break of dawn, even though it's a 22 range. And the only reason, most, the reason why I usually get to the range really early is because I want to get here before everyone else. But that's usually with the main line. Here at the Rimfire range, there's really not much of a crowd. So it makes sense that I don't have to come out here early. But for this, I came out early simply to uh, anticipate weather. So hopefully I can get some rounds in while it's nice. Right now it's really nice. There's like little zero wind pretty much. And it'd be nice to confirm my scope because if you, the last range vlog, which was at the end of December, uh, if you recall, I came out here and shot zero this uh, Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. And uh, it was really windy that day when I, the only day I could come out shooting during the uh, Christmas holiday break. And so uh, it'd be nice to get a nice confirmation on the uh, the no wind zero at least. So uh, that's what I'm shooting today. I figure it's worthwhile to mention why I haven't been to the range uh, until February 18th of this year. It's pretty much because uh, January is just a busy month for me. Invariably every year January gets really busy. With SHOT Show I take a lot of vacation days from work. And it's not like I don't have enough vacation days, it's just that I can't take a lot of them uh, in any given month because of how busy we are in the amount of work that I do or my, my team does and my, my, my group does at work. So uh, SHOT Show obviously took a good portion of my week off in January. Um, lots of stuff going on at work. And then the one the times I did want to come out to the range early in the morning to do a quick uh, you know pre-office, you know, pre-work range visit is uh, it was windy those days and I was gonna shoot 22s. So that's why I didn't come out to the range in January pretty much in February because invariably every time I wanted to come out to the range it was just windy. So this is probably the first day that I could have the opportunity to shoot 22 on a day that I, you know, actually had time to take off and go to the range. So that's why I'm out here. I finally, uh, it's deep into February. I don't know if you can see behind me the, uh, if you noticed that I'm driving my Jeep today. And for those of you who haven't followed or didn't pay attention to my regular blog, my website, or my not a range vlog video that I posted in mid-January, I did acquire a uh, Jeep Wrangler. It's a 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited Rubicon. And it's important to know that it's a JK because obviously in 2018, Jeep released the new Wrangler generation known as the JL. And um, I actually picked up this JK, if you uh, just to uh, throw some extra information for those who didn't watch my last not a range vlog video. Uh, at the end of the year of 2017, I just, you know, decided to go ahead and splurge on a Jeep. Um, I was looking at the JLs. I didn't test drive one, but I test drove both two JKs, uh, automatic and a manual transmission. And uh, re doing a lot of research, because I've been researching Jeeps for about a good year and a half to two years deciding whether or not I was going to buy a Jeep because I wanted a Jeep it's just I think they're way too expensive it's a whole other a whole other conversation altogether but you know I had the opportunity just you know what end of 2017 felt like buying a new vehicle and um, been thinking off for a long time so I just went ahead and got it so it is a Gobi uh, the Gobi desert I guess Gobi tan uh, paint or 
factory finish. So uh, kind of what I wanted. And uh, I'll talk about some of the stuff that I'm doing to it probably in a later vlog or probably in a whole separate video. Shot 10 rounds at 25 yards just to kind of get where the zero's at. And it looks like it's doing pretty well. Shooting the uh, SK ammo. Take a quick look at this target here. So you can see here, this is the very first round of the day on a cold bore. Then this is uh, four shots. Then here's five shots. So it's pretty much dead on at uh, 25 yards. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out to uh, 50 just to confirm zeros there. And uh, I think we're good. Um, uh, gr fortunately enough, the, uh, the uh, zeroing I did on that windy, that windy day at the range during the holiday break uh, was actually uh, productive. Probably noticed that I'm wearing glasses instead of my sunglasses. They're actually in the car, but uh, I finally picked up a second pair of regular glasses that aren't like dress style, you know, they're like half wire uh, glasses that were really good for the range or for any kind of non, you know, non business use, I guess. So I, I got these uh, Oakley's. I can't remember what these are. Um, uh, I totally forgot the model, but it took me a while to figure out some actual regular, you know, thick frame glasses to get from I am a fan of Oakley, even though they are made in China by Luxottica, you know, it's in a part of a conglomerate. I still like Oakley glasses or Oakley frames at least. So that's why I got them. But uh, it's nice to have a nice pair of, or it's uh, good to have a nice pair of glasses that are a little bit more rugged than just those half wire or rimless frames. And as far as the weather today, again, no wind. It is chillier out here. I think it's 40 degrees on all my Kestrel. I know 40 degrees to a lot of you folks who aren't in California, this is nothing, but for us, it's Southern California, this is a little chilly. So that's why I'm wearing, I've actually doubled up on jackets here. Uh, I learned from the last time I was out here when I shot that NRL 22 match when it was too windy and it's a lot of wind chill. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm doubled up here, tripled up, shirt, jacket, and another jacket. Well, let's get some rounds at 50. Let's see where we stand. So I threw a couple uh, more paces at 50 figure out what's going on with this. Uh, as far as my center fire shooting, the reason why I haven't been shooting center fire is simply because not much else, well, coming out to Weston to shoot center fire is only fruitful for me, at least for just the main line, the 100 yard line, is in order to uh, test loads because 100 yards, not really difficult to shoot at 100 yards. So it's just mainly load testing. And since I don't have any loads to test, no real reason to shoot you know come out to the range early in the morning before work just to shoot on the main line and that's why i'd rather just shoot 22s right now but i plan on taking um this wednesday this upcoming wednesday off to head out to the palmdale range the desert marston range where i will be shooting some center fire and hopefully tuesday i will have in my hands some new brass that i talked about in my shot sh one of my shot show uh blog articles if you haven't read my SHOT Show blog articles, I've posted seven parts, I think, of uh, my after action report for 2018. So definitely go read that. It's, it should be good for you to read if you're interested to see what I, what I wanted to talk about at SHOT Show or what I saw at SHOT Show that I felt was worth discussing. But anyway, Peterson Cartridge, their brass, uh, is highly um, regarded among a few competitive shooters and some folks who are in the know. 
And so I went to talk to Peterson Cartridge during the SHOT Show, and it just so happened I saw that they were releasing six millimeter Creedmoor brass in both small and large rifle primers. Uh, they put them on pre-sale, pre-order the week after, or a week and a half after SHOT Show, and I bought 200 pieces. And they shipped them last week. Hopefully I'll have them on Tuesday, which gives me just barely enough time to, to load, some, some, uh, load some of that brass and take it out to the Desert Marson Range to shoot some load testing. And then if I have enough time to load enough rounds, stretch it out to a little bit to uh, the 600 yard line. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, hopefully I'll, get, I'll be at the uh, Desert Marson Range this Wednesday and shoot some of the six millimeter crude more. Not all that happy right now with the performance of 50. I think some of it could be the way I ride the bag because um, I was doing a little bit of experimentation with kind of keeping my hand under this under the back of the stock just to elevate it as opposed to letting it ride the bag and i think that actually resulted in a more consistent group when i did that but who knows uh i shot 20 rounds of wolch wolf match extra and as you can see here the uh shots on target uh this is the first five so as i said um Kind of a wash because you're kind of getting the uh the lubricant of the ammo or the rounds to kind of wash over the old ones but these are the first three rounds and then the next two this one actually set it up pretty well and then for some reason when i was doing my experiment um experimentation with how to ride the bag the point of impact dropped lower so i think wolf mash extra is definitely a little bit more consistent than what was happening here with SK at 50 yards. Um, maybe I'll have to try Wolf Match Extra long term, but that's where we stand on that. I kept my target at 50. I just didn't feel like bringing it out to 65, 75, and 100 up the hill. I'm just gonna shoot some prone at 50, just to get a little prone practice in because I haven't been shooting much lately. And I figured this would be a good opportunity to, to stretch out a little bit, at least as far as position-wise, not the distance. For those who didn't read my blog or my after-action reports on SHOT Show, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the few things that I uh, covered, at least while I was out there, was the Ruger Precision Rifle or Ruger Precision Rimfire which is the newest rimfire gun out as far as precision rimfire is concerned. And I think the, uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of the RPR, to be honest. I mean, I, th I think it's a solid gun, but as far as buying one and buying that platform, I am not really too keen on it. But for those who already own an RPR, it's a nice rimfire gun to get because you can shoot the same gun that you shoot rimfire that you do center fire. So it's nice to have the same platform. And I think uh, this is going to show that I think rimfire is starting to become a viable, I guess, discipline now for other types of shooting. Because rimfire in the past has been restricted, at least competitor fire was mainly small bore three position small bore, you know, iron sights, standing, sitting, kneeling, and then prone, or uh, bench rest. But now that, uh, I guess, so-called precision rifle shooting is starting to become a more popular venue or discipline, uh, rim fire, a rimfire version of that makes sense because of range concerns, uh, range limitations, and, uh, you know, people who want to try something new but don't want to go, you know, go hard on a, an expensive centerfire gun. 
Granted, people are going to start investing in expensive rimfire guns, like Anschutz or the new Voodoo. But anyway, I think that rimfire is starting to be, uh, be become a new resurgence, or it's going to be a resurgence on rimfire guns. At least good rimfire guns, or anything catering towards people who want a <coughs> precision Precision tactical type rimfire gun. I think we're going to see more more options out there now. Um, but I think the Voodoo is the next big thing. I mean, that's been out for a while now. That's why I didn't talk about a SHOT Show, my SHOT Show after action report. <clears throat> but for those who don't know, the Voodoo is a Remington 700 pattern action. That is rimfire. So you can get a Voodoo barreled action and shoot that in or drop that into any Remington 700 compatible chassis or stock. And they're I think they're $2000 for barreled action, I could be wrong. But from what I've seen, they're pretty cool and I might consider getting one, but my CZ 455 I think is is adequate for what I'm doing right now. And considering I spent 500 bucks on this gun, Oh, the gun itself. Another thirty dollars for a uh, that trigger job. I think it's a good good rifle. Granted, I mean you're seeing these these stringing at you know these vertical strings at fifty yards, but <laughs> honestly, I don't know if that's me or not. Or the ammo. Now, as far as New guns that I might acquire. Uh, there's already one that I did acquire, theoretically, is the Nucleus Action from American Rifle Company. I talked about that in my blog art, my after action port from Shot Show, in my blog at okfg.net. So find the part, or because it's multi parts. I, I release my after action report is done over a period of several days, and I release several parts each day. So one part each day. Um, so I think I had seven parts. And in each part or each segment, I cover three or four different items or products or topics. And uh, I think one of them, well, I think part two, I think, I talked about the Nucleus Action, which I did buy. I pre-ordered it for eight fifty, and the regular price is 1000 now, so you guys kind of lost out on that. It was open to everyone to pre-order. But essentially, the American Rifle Nucleus Action is going to be a... Kind of a less expensive model of the of the uh, American Rifle Company mousing field, and so it doesn't have an integral recoil lug. No integral recoil lug. Um, it's got a slightly different design as far as the uh, well, significantly uh, different design on the bolt. Um, Seventy degree bolt, but the bolt stop is actually. A rotating key type mechanism. It's not a, not an actual press button. What you do is you rotate it 180 degrees to the rear to drop to remove the bolt, and you reinsert 180 degrees forward to lock the bolt back in. Uh, the re there's a the recoil lug is actually keyed for the uh, the proprietary base or the rail that they use for the scope, which is interesting. Um, but for the price, it looks really good. Um, so that's why I bought it. And I'm not sure what I'm going to build on it, but I'm buying, I've am i got that action on pre-order or, or uh, whatnot, back order. And I may, I may just go with a pre-thread and just barrel it myself. But I'm going to talk to Daniel, um, the RO, and see what he's going to do with his. Um, and uh, I made pre-thread mine, or I might have a gunsmith. Uh, I might have a gunsmith shoulder barrel for it. I'm not entirely sure, but if I decide to go cheap, I'll go pre-thread. The problem with pre-threaded barrels is you do have a limitation on what you can get off the shelf. 
See, Bartling's going to charge you, I think, $150 or $200 just to pre third pre chamber, at which point the f total cost is going to be $500 something dollars for a Bartling barrel. You may as well just have a gunsmith shoulder it at that point. If only thing you gain on the pre thread with a Bartling, if you spend that much money, is the fact that you don't have downtime on your action, um, sending it off, and then turnaround time. With the pre thread, you just do it at home. So, um, we'll see what I do with it. I'm not even sure what cartridge I want to shoot in it. I was actually bonding two two four Valkyrie. Um, which I also talked about my uh, my after action report 224 Valkyrie. Um, I was kind of keen on it and now I'm not keen on it. It's I want to shoot 90 grains really fast 90 grain 22 cal bullets But it doesn't seem like you get much velocity as you think you would out of that cartridge and So I may just stick with the 6 mil variant or 6.5 variant We'll see um, I'm liking six Creedmoor still for this. Maybe I'll go pre. Th I. The thing is with six mil Creedmoor barrels, I, you know, I'm not anywhere close to burning out my barrel on my my mousing field yet. Um, I've only got 500 rounds in it, I think 400 rounds. Well, maybe I'm close. If you if you consider the 2,000 round supposed lifespan of a six millimeter Creedmoor barrel, then I've only got I've already 25% deep. But anyway, uh, let's assume that I'm only getting 2,000 rounds out of a six Creedmoor barrel. It would make sense to just pre-thread, pre-chamber those barrels and just go through them quickly so, um, or just be able to change them out quickly um, on my own. So maybe it's worthwhile just to uh, to run six Creedmoor with pre-threaded, pre-chambered barrels so I don't have much downtime on the gun. And then go with a 6.5 shouldered barrel by a gunsmith, um, a gunsmith installed barrel. Since you get a little bit more life out of that. But, uh, or... The solution to that is just to buy more actions so you have, <laughs> you can always have an action um, that you can use while the other action's out being pre barreled. So uh, we'll see. Uh, total brain fart. Uh, it's Sunday. I didn't pay attention to the calendar. There's actually the PBR match day. So they're going to be shooting over this range. And so, good thing I got here early and got my rounds in. So it's uh, 7.30. They're going to go hot at around 8. So I got to get all my stuff cleared out before then. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pack up my gear and maybe roll to the main line. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to uh, the RSO Shots Gunsmith that I use. And then um, I'll probably do a closeout little segment and talk about a few things and another bay. I don't know. Uh, but let me go and get my stuff out before I slow down. The match that's going to start because I think they're setting up targets on out in the distance, so, uh, BRB. So I ended up cutting my range session a little shorter than I expected because of the PBR match that was gonna go on. Um, but I got pretty much all I wanted to do as far as getting some rounds down range to start off my range vlogs for 2018. Uh, but I uh, had a good conversation with the RSO slash gunsmith here at the West End Gun Club. Well, he's RSO for the West End Gun Club, but he's also a gunsmith on the side. But he helped me out uh, where he, we were just talking a little bit about uh, the nucleus action and what he planned on doing with his and what I might do with mine. So I got some, uh, got some ideas in my head as far as where I want to take that. Uh, so before I take off from the range, I'm actually outside of the range. I'm in the creek bed, sort of. I'm in this like little section here. Um, just take, because it's nice and quiet here to, to actually just talk to the camera. But... I uh, wanted to go ahead and give away a few things, actually, to uh, for those of you that actually follow my YouTube channel and my blog. But I have a couple hats here that I wanted to give away. So basically how this is going to work, I have this Harris Engineering uh, hat. It's in some random camo, real tree, or whatever you want to call this. I think it's real tree. No, it's mossy oak. Sorry, it's mossy oak camo, Harris Engineering. And I have this Remington 870DM. Um, for detachable magazine, if you don't know what the 870DM is, that is the detachable magazine version of a Remington 870, which I did talk about in my after action report for SHOT Show. So the way you get these hats is, unfortunately it's going to require you to do uh, these Twitter or Instagram. And the idea is I'd like you to post, um, for the Harris Engineering one, just post a picture of your rifle with a Harris bipod. If you want to be in it, even better in the photo. but. 
Um, just take a photo, uh, tag me in it. And if you're going to do an Instagram, post on Instagram, tag OCABJ. If you're going to do it on Twitter, just tag OCABJ. Um, either one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll give you until, let's just say the first person to do it. First person to post a, uh, a photo of their rifle with a Harris bipod, you can be in it or you don't have to be in it. Post on Instagram, post on Twitter, tag OCABJ. You'll, the first person to tag me will get this uh, hat. The only other contingency is you got to be in the United States. So in the United States, I'll ship anywhere in the United States this Harris Engineering cap. For the Remington 870 cap, same idea. First person to post a picture of themselves or of just of their 870 DM. Um, post it on Instagram or Twitter. Tag me in it. And the first person to do that will get this Remington 870 cap. DM cap. Uh, again, contingency is you got to be United States. Uh, just to be on, just it'll be just kind of uh, on your honor type thing, posting your own photo of your own rig, not someone else's rig, or pulling a photo off the internet and posting it. So I'm just gonna take it on faith that you will, you know, be honest about it and post photos, your own photo of your own rig. But that's how you get either one. Um, so if you happen to have both, an 870 and a gun with a Harris bipod, you can only enter once, so I just want to make it fair just for those people who are trying to get one of these hats. So you can all, if, you, if you're one of those people who just happens to have both guns or both platforms, uh, just pick the one you want. Hopefully no one else did it before you did, though. Anyway, well, okay, let's just do that. If you happen to have both, you can feel free to post both, and if you happen to be the first person for either one, I will let you pick between the two. So that will just how, that's how we'll do that. So again, Harris Engineering Bipod, if you have one on your gun, just post a picture of it on Twitter or Instagram and tag me in it to get this. If you have a Remington 870DM, uh, post a picture of it, tag me in it on Instagram or Twitter. So two other items I'm gonna give away are these um, Swiss Army knives. These are Wounded Warrior Project Swiss Army knives. They have the Wounded Warrior Project um, skins on them or handles rather. Um, you probably can't see them because they won't be in focus, they're kind of small, but um, this is a regular just Swiss Army knife with two blades, a long and a short. Standard bottle opener, can opener, and then flathead screwdriver type deal, um, corkscrew, and then the punch. Um, if I can get the punch out, yeah, it's a little stiff. But um, to get this one, uh, the rules are you gotta be 18 years of age in the United States. I'll ship to the United States only. And to get this, um, the contest will simply be just post a response to this uh, range vlog video. Um, I will close it out after I post it. If whenever I post it, there will be a, I will do a uh, one week um, like lead time as as far as when you can post something, uh, post a response, and I'll randomly pick a, a a response or a comment on the YouTube video to receive this. And this small one is just kind of a little dinky, um, TSA friendly. It only has two, two, um, two uh, features on it, or two little, I don't know, blades, so to speak. You got the scissors, and then um, this little can opener, Phillips head screwdriver type thing, uh, or bottle opener, Phillips head screwdriver, and then you got a toothpick. It's a really simple type thing. It's a Wounded Warrior Project one as well. Um, I guess... Uh, same deal with this. Um, I think we'll uh, just have a commenter, but anybody who wants this one, you say you're gonna, or those of you who want to give it to your kid, since it's a TSA friendly one, it means it's, an, it's also youth friendly. It's got no knife, it's just got scissors on it. So just post that you want to give this to your kid and then, um, or your, you know, uh, your child. And I will randomly pick again one week after this post goes up i will pick one of the um, random commenters that says that stated that they want to give this to their um to the kid so that's how we'll do it again I'll, after i post this video there will be seven days at which you can post a response to enter in for the random drawing to get the full size or the this little tsa friendly youth friendly model so we'll do that so this is a little thing to give away for those because i'm not going to keep you know use these and these are all from SHOT Show those two hats and the two Swiss Army knives came from SHOT Show anyway that's kind of it for now um, I know it's a short range vlog and really not much shooting in this range vlog it's mostly me talking about stuff that's going on right now stuff at SHOT 
Um, and then uh, in the future, I should be, it's Sunday, but hopefully on Wednesday, I will be at the Desert Marston Range in Palmdale, and I will be, I plan on shooting my six millimeter Creedmoor there because I plan on having the Peterson brass loaded, ready to go uh, the night before to test that out. And then uh, hopefully when I'm out there, I may do a little like Jeep tour video. Um, I've seen some videos online of like Jeep tours. Um, and they're, they're really stupid. Um, how can you make them interesting? But uh, some of them are really stupid, to be honest. And I don't want to be insulting, but they're just not really um, very informative as far as a tour of a vehicle. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show off a little few things about what kind of the my Jeep tour video will simply be my gripes about the Wrangler. And um, as much as I wanted this vehicle and much as I thought about it for a good almost two years on deciding whether or not to buy it, uh, there are a lot of gripes that I, ha I have about it. Even though I do like this vehicle, I, there are some things I want to make known. And uh, I definitely want to record a video and probably um, write a little article about my gripes regarding the Wrangler, at least the JK. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, head out get some breakfast and head, head home and get out of this wind because it should be windy. Um, it's already about five miles an hour right now, but I think it's gonna hit at least 15 in the next few hours. Um, there should be some rain in the forecast for tonight. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Today is Sunday, February 18th at the West End Gun Club. Uh, thanks for watching this range vlog. See you next time.